So some of you might be familiar with the story of my Fallout 4 shirt. Basically, I won this from a contest that I never actually entered because I didn't actually pre-order Fallout 4. It was sent to me by mistake, and which sucked because ever since I was a kid, I've wanted to win a contest, prove the odds wrong, prove my dad wrong when he said, no, no, you never win those things. They're just scams to try and get you out of your money. But you'll notice that this shirt is now covered in a Twitch hoodie, and this I actually did win. This was sent to me from a group called Twitch RPG, or Research Power Group. Basically, they're a study organization that sends you surveys for things like, what do you think of eSports? Like, how often do you watch Twitch? What do you think of YouTube? And like, vid the video upload service they recently announced. It's good stuff. It helps them out by actually giving them the information that is so important to figure to figuring out whether or not that you're doing the right thing, if you're actually making people happy with your business decisions. Being a content creator and a platform holder my own, I can say that for sure. So yeah, those guys are actually legit, despite some of the red flags they were giving me. Seriously, I contacted customer support and they sent me to a user on Twitch. That, that was kind of sketchy, but yeah, they are legit, and they also sent me like a thermos, which is really cool because it's got all of the Twitch emotes printed on the outside of it. It's probably really hard to see with this lighting and the color and everything, and they also sent me some stickers and some buttons. I mean, it wasn't the grand prize, which was twi tickets to TwitchCon, but hey, I won something. I'm really happy with this, especially considering how comfortable it is. It's made out of some great material, and it just goes to show that persistence pays off, and you can never succeed if you don't even try. Now, if only I could apply that principle to the Powerball. Well, I've done it. Thanks to my super cool teammates here at Team Pizza, I have at last hopped into the world of VR via the PlayStation VR. And now that I've experienced what modern virtual reality is like firsthand, I finally feel comfortable doing a discussion video on an aspect of the industry that I've had my eye on for a couple years at least. So if you're interested in the format or just want to know what all the fuss is about, I'll do my best to explain what my experience was like, as well as some very big points you should definitely consider before jumping in. VR, put bluntly, is unlike anything I've experienced in any game ever. Everyone keeps saying that looking at footage of what other people are seeing does not do justice to wearing the headset yourself, and having worn the headset myself, I can confirm they are 100% correct. Being able to have direct one-to-one -one control over the camera in a video game world is something so simple, yet so powerful that I can only describe it as genius. The feeling you get when you lean forward and the view adjusts ever so slightly to your movements makes you feel, maybe not more immersed, so much as freed. The ability to appreciate every single angle of a video game world, to study every minute detail, is something I never knew I wanted as badly as I did until until I did it. It makes games feel more natural, more fluid and responsive. In fact, after playing Rigs, I'm thoroughly convinced that the mouse is no longer the definitive way to play an FPS, because in that game, you can change targets as quickly as you can turn your head and look at it. And you'd think the novelty would wear off eventually, but no, even after a few weeks, I still find myself being blown away by how these games feel compared to what I'm used to. It is truly something special in my opinion, but the crazy part is, I was lucky. The stars that needed to align for me to have this experience were numerous indeed, so let's go down the list one by one. First off, be aware that these devices are not cheap, and don't be fooled by the $400 price tag of the PlayStation VR. That thing also needs a PS4 camera to work, and some games even require the Move controllers. And even after all that, it still ends up on the lower end of what VR headsets are going for right now. Never mind that you need either a PlayStation 4 itself or a fairly decent gaming PC to even use any of this tech in the first place. And no, I'm not just going to assume assume everyone has one of those already. Oh, and don't forget to put some money aside for the games you want to play in VR, most of which are currently sitting around $20 to $60. Sony's actually been pretty clever about this, encouraging developers to put VR functionality in games that don't necessarily need it. 
This means you could play them even without the headset, and like Amiibo, it might encourage those on the fence to drop some extra dough just to get a little more out of their favorite games. But from my experiences, the titles that make this gimmick worth it are the ones specifically designed for it, which should not be surprising anybody. This is a huge chunk of change on top of what, next to Warhammer, is already one of the most expensive hobbies out there. And there's still another hurdle you have to jump over for VR to be good. Motion sickness. The reports of people getting nauseous while playing virtual reality games are incredibly scattershot. My roommate K-Ray shows motion sickness in other situations, but VR doesn't bother her one bit. And then there are stories from people like me, who are perfectly fine everywhere else, but whose stomachs start turning when the game moves in a way their brain doesn't like, or when they play for too long. There doesn't seem to be any consistent way to tell ahead of time if VR is going to give you problems other than to see if it happens. So even if saving up your pennies isn't an issue, there's still no guarantee that your expensive new piece of tech won't make you vomit all over your carpet. And yes, you heard that correctly. I still love this thing despite the fact that it makes my gut feel fluttery sometimes. But I'm a connoisseur of the interactive arts. I'm a sucker for anything that lets me appreciate my games in a much more personal way. But if you think that literally being made sick by the experience just isn't worth it, that is completely justifiable. Oh, and let's not forget Sony's history of actually supporting the peripherals they make. Did you know Vita means life in Latin? Yeah, hindsight's always 2020, huh? Like I said, I love how modern VR turned out. I'm glad it's a thing I get to experience, and if you don't have any of the problems I've described, I recommend it with glowing praise. But I'm just saying, if this doesn't turn out to be successful, well, I will completely understand why. Can I have some useless information? In 1872, locals in New Yorkshire recorded that a swarm of ladybirds took three days to pass. One seven-letter word that contains ten other words without any of the letters being rearranged is therein. It includes the, there, he, in, rain, her, here, air, therein, and herein. Cueta in Spain is actually located in Africa, just across the Straits of Gibraltar. The world's fastest racket sport is badminton, where the shuttlecock reaches speeds of nearly 200 miles per hour. You could kill somebody with one of those things. And finally, a recent survey revealed that 25% of Swedish women had had sex with more than 50 men. There's something to grow on in your life.